I, I have a wonderful life, but I am concentrating on my dollars right now, growing my financial uh, portfolio right now. But I am careful to pray to God. God, I know that money is the absolute smallest problem you can have. I realize that now. So I'm careful to pray, Lord, I want dollars, definitely. But don't give me one dollar if you take away anything else I have right now, like my health, my family, my relationship. Who is Chip McAllister? Well, I guess I would start off with um, the number one is is, yeah, I'm a son of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing in my life. Um, secondly, I am the husband of the most wonderful being that God ever put on this earth for me, my wife, Kim, and um, my wonderful children, uh, CJ, Kristen, and Elon. I'm the father of them. And I'm the son of uh, Phil McAllister Sr. over here, who's uh, in the studio right now. A very proud son. And um, other than that, I am just uh, an edifier and encourager and uplifter of people. I used to be ashamed to say this, but I absolutely love people. And I'm a very popular person. And that's kind of weird to say, oh, oh, somebody's saying he's popular. But I am. But the reason I can say that is because I genuinely love people. I derive strength from being around people. I love helping people. I love making them laugh. I love, um, you know, just, just I get strength from them. Now, as far as things that I've done in my life, um, this is the 10-second version. I started out as, uh, you don't want to know about the bus boy, box boy, and all those jobs. I was an actor back in the day. Um, um, the most notable thing I've done is I played the young Muhammad Ali in the greatest um, when he was at his mo- when he was the most famous man in the world. I got a chance to tour around um, seven different states for three different months with Muhammad Ali. Got to sit on the second row of the Ali Norton three fight uh, next to his mom. Um, uh, so got to see I was part of history. Then I. Uh, after that, that was the greatest thing I did, and that was the first jo- acting job I ever got. I, I um, answered a, uh, an ad on television uh, where they were looking for a young man to play Muhammad Ali. But that was the first thing and the biggest thing I ever did. So, but I was an actor for about 12 years, and then when I became a fledgling actor, my young kids by then told me, Daddy, we can't eat your dreams, so <laughs> you need to go get a job. So I went back uh, and I called myself the oldest living graduate. I graduated from uh, college at the age of 38 uh, and very proud moment. Got into corporate America and um, really uh, did well there. Uh, But in 1992, my wife Kim and I, we love ourselves. uh, We love each other so much that we decided to quit corporate America and spend every moment together. So we started having our own businesses. And uh, five years ago, we finally decided to do what Kim has wanted to do her whole life was to get into real estate. And now we are realtors. I've just recently this year become a broker. Um, Our business is starting to take off. But the reason I got into this business, Jonathan, was to meet you. (laughs) <laughs> because I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not a door knocker or a farmer, um, and I think those are outdated methods. And I think the way you do things is phenomenal. And um, admittedly, I'm wanting to get my hand held <laughs> so I can be a zealot of yours. I already am, but but I, I want to uh, realize the success that I knew that I was going to get even before I became a real estate because of the advent of the power of social media of which you're a guru. So you talked about a lot of things and um, 
this podcast is based off of advice. It's based off of good advice, bad advice, wrong advice, right advice, whatever it is, it's based off of advice. What would you say is a piece of advice that you would give to somebody who is, you know, going from corporate America into entrepreneurship and maybe something that you wish you would have done in the past um, when you made that switch? Is there any advice that you would give to somebody there? Because it couldn't have just been, hey, we're, we're, we're quitting and we're going to start and everything's successful and we know everything from the start. There had to have been some mistakes made along the road. Well, I'm yeah. going to presume. Oh, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, Jonathan. That's so true. Um, I guess the biggest thing is, is uh, every time Kim and I would get hired um, in a position to become an employee of a company, things would be great and awesome until – something like your boss or the person who hired you or your champion got a promotion or quit or retired. And then all of a sudden there's a whole new regime and things change and where you were valued, um, you weren't, you're not so valuable anymore. And that would happen over and over again where we would excel. And then, then you'd get somebody who really, we felt they weren't qualified to be someone that we were in their organization as opposed to them being in ours. <laughs> Let's put it like that. So we decided that we really needed to, with the intelligence that we had together, we needed to be, we needed to tap into that entrepreneurial spirit. So specifically, Jonathan, the movie Shawshank Redemption, that movie changed my life. So it will always be my favorite movie. Because that movie is based on being institutionalized, self-imposed, um, being institutionalized, right? Andy Dufresne, who was a man in prison, his mind made him free whether he was in prison or not. But people on the outside, they put restraints on themselves so they can be imprisoned outside. So what Kim and I realized is that after that movie, a month after that, that's when we quit corporate America. I mean, when we quit, yeah, corporate America, and we said we're going to be entrepreneurs because we don't have to depend on um, the government because we had government jobs too, government or corporate America to take care of us. We could go out on our own. So, so what would you say is one of the things that you've done correctly as far as going into entrepreneurship? being your own boss, doing the things that you want to do, making your own calendar, because it's very easy, right? I'm assuming there everything's perfect. You don't have any bad days, right? It's so easy. You know, you just wake up whenever you want, do whatever you want, right? It's the perfect lifestyle. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur because they don't have to work. They don't have to do anything. Business just comes screaming to them. It's so easy. And these are the things, obviously, that are not true. <laughs> uh, but a, a lot of people, especially with social media, they think that, oh, I can just give up everything and become this real estate agent. And I have a lot of friends, so this is going to be easy. What would be something or what would be a, a piece of advice that you would give to somebody who thinks that, hey, we, we can just drop stuff. It's going to be easy. And <laughs> we no longer have to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I I, I, I I've know that you were being facetious when you said what you said when I did have those stints of you know being like not productive when you don't work you don't eat you mm. know so the th the thing is is you definitely have to um uh do the things necessary um to succeed and what would you say some of those things are for you that's what I was gonna say the, who knows as an entrepreneur there are no steps there 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 is no manual. So I can easily say, do the things you know. You don't know what to do. So what you do is you study. And for me, I told you the first thing I said is I pray. I pray and, and I go forward and, and take steps towards the things that, that I know I'm supposed to be doing. And the biggest thing, and I don't know if you've ever heard this or you're ever going to hear this again. The biggest thing Kim and I do to be successful is to not let things stress us out. Mm. We say it's... <laughs> That's what we call the mic drop right there. It's, we believe, we live, it's the journey, not the destination. So we treat our clients excellently. We, we make certain that 
that, that everything we do, we do it with excellence. We arrive on time. We prepare the best um, CMAs for our clients. Um, we, we treat our clients. We, turn, we do not tell our clients to buy homes that we wouldn't tell our mother or father to buy. We, I, I'll tell you, three weeks ago, and Kim and I are by no means wealthy. Three weeks ago, we left, if you will, $70,000 on the table. And I feel great about it because we didn't tell our clients who could have afforded something. We didn't talk them into doing something that we wouldn't talk somebody we loved into. Or, or we love them. So some, we, we, would, we didn't talk them into doing something that we wouldn't talk our own parents into doing. And that was three different clients. But we know that that in the long run is going to serve us. I sleep well at night. And actually, when I, when I prayed about it, the Lord showed me, if I keep on that road, that's the road that's going to lead me to where I want to be or where I, I, my destiny is. If I ever say, man, just this once, I'm going to tell Jonathan, man, Jonathan, if you get this $10 million thing instead of this $3 million thing, man, oh, my God, you'll make so much money. You know, if I, if I lead you in a way of straight for money, that's going to be the fork that's going to take me off the wrong that's what we would call a commission breath. And I think yeah. that a lot of people have yes. it is yes. they're saying what they need to say in order to get paid. But right. I'm actually writing a book on this topic that's called the law of the bullseye, which mm. goes into if you aim for the wrong target, you'll hit it every time. <laughs> right. And it's kind of funny because we have that quote in our bathroom because it's, it resonates in there as well. But if you aim for the, if you, if you aim for the wrong target, <laughs> Wait, you didn't hit your sound effect. Oh, on that. the... <laughs> there you go. You <laughs> Uh, and so it, it talks about if you aim for the wrong target, you hit it every time. If I were to stand in front of a crowd and I would call up an agent and I would give them a dart, okay, and I would say on the wall there's a dartboard. Uh, the bullseye is a $10 million listing, and from that, let's go back and say the outer ring is a $100,000 listing. You have one shot. What are you going to go for? Everybody is going to say the $10 million listing. Right. If I flip the question on them and I say if you hit the $10 million listing, you're going to have anxiety. You're going to have stress. You'll probably lead to a divorce. You're going to get go into alcoholism. That person is never going to give you another client again. They're going to not be your best friend. They'll never send you a referral. They're going to leave you a one-star testimonial. Most people would still go for the $10 million mm. listing. Why? Because that's a huge commission right. check for right. themselves. If I told you, however, that the outer ring, let's say it was $100,000, became your best friend who referred you another client who referred you another client, who then became another best friend and you actually created what we call a business and life that you love. Now you're not only just making more money in your pocket over the long term because the National Association states that for every client you should be getting 5.7 referrals from. The reason that you don't is because you're working with the wrong clients. You're telling them the wrong thing. So you don't build this sustainable business because your business is based on lies. Your business is based on deceit. Your business is based on you and not the client. So I think anybody that's listening to this needs to realize and listen to what Chip is saying because, you know, he's looking at this as a long-term play. Could he have made X amount of dollars overnight? Not necessarily overnight, but in a, in a relatively short amount of time, yes. But would that client have referred him another client if they realized, man, this was a bad deal, right? Man, this didn't work out the way. Man, I'm going into bankruptcy. Man, whatever the case may be, I think that you need to realize that if you wouldn't refer it to your own family, if you wouldn't recommend it to yourself, think about it yourself. If you had the money to make this deal yourself, would you do it? And if you're going to say no, even even if you even if you were told not to speak up, speak up. Like even, as a real estate broker, if I noticed that something was wrong that I knew potentially might you know cancel the deal, who cares? I'm going to tell you that there's mold in the bathroom. I'm going to tell you that hey, I I found out that there was a foundation crack. I'm going to tell you that. This is actually not the area that you want to be in. Why? Because this is, you know, appreciation rates and let's go look at this area. Even if I was told, Jonathan, stop giving me your opinion, I'm still going to give the opinion. Why? I want to sleep good at night. Yeah. I want to know that they're they're taken care of. So that way, if they were to call me back and say uh, anything, it's all great news. It's, hey, I have another client for you. Thank you so much for treating us well. Hey, didn't work out. I understand that 
you know, that house didn't work out, but we'll find another one. And those are the people, not just in business, but in life I want to be surrounded by. And so what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, our, I guess it's kind of like an open-ended question. We say that we want to help people create a business and life that they love because a lot of people come to me and they say, Hey, Jonathan, help us with ads, help us with Facebook, help us with this. And then I realize there's a lot of other issues that they're going through right now that they're mm-hmm. using social media as kind of a cover up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they're using it saying, Oh, if my business was just better then my life would get better. Mm-hmm. Right. If I just made more money, then I would love my wife again. Mm-hmm. If I just did this, th- you get what I'm saying? Right. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, well, here are my thoughts on it is um, right now my life is such that I am a billionaire right now without the money. Don't have a dime. <laughs> Don't have a dime. But my wife loves me. My kids love me. My parents, my dad loves me. I, wherever I go to my club, to my church, to the, anywhere I go, I'm received well. So I have, I'm respected and I give respect. I'm not a respecter of people. I, in the um, health club, uh, um, in um, Aliso Viejo, Renaissance Club Sport, I know everybody that works there, all the people that clean the lockers. I, I have a wonderful life, but I am concentrating on my dollars right now, growing my financial uh, portfolio right now. But I am careful to pray to God. God, I know that money is the absolute smallest problem you could have. I realize that now. So I'm careful to pray, Lord, I want dollars, definitely. But don't give me one dollar if you take away anything else I have right now, like my health, my family, my relationship. So the way we handle things is is just do the best we can. And, man, so many miracles just happen, so many small things that Back in the day when I was a conceited, I'm an only child. I was a selfish, um, uh, conceited, um, materialistic person at one time in my life. But now my um, we've gone through some financial stuff. And as a matter of fact, the smallest things mean so much to me right now. We... Just since 2013, my middle son, CJ, my wife, and myself, we have been sharing one car for six years. And just two months ago, we are back on the right track. We all have our own cars. And I have a dream car. And when I say dream, that's kind of silly because I didn't even know the car existed before the day I got it, because <laughs> I didn't covet it and say, I want this, I want that. I just got, I humbled myself, and I called a friend of mine who's a very, oh, I'll just say his name is Damon Shelley. He owns um, Shelley BMW, Shelley Rolls Royce, and he owns about like 20 car dealerships. I called him, and I humbled myself. I said, Shelley, I'm starting to do well in real estate. I'm just trying to get back into life. Man, every time I've ever bought or leased a car before people just rake me over the coals they kill me I'm just humbling myself what could you do I mean I want to I want to get a car he said Chip I love you man um let me call you back in 10 minutes <laughs> he he just uh called he called me back in 10 minutes he said go down to my um BMW BMW in Irvine I went oh BMW okay <laughs> 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 and he, he had my car man The deal he gave me, I looked online, the deal he gave me was dang near half price of this car, and and I'm driving around. And But before in my life, I've had Mercedes Benz and everything, and I thought I was cool, and it was just a terrible situation. But this one, every time I look at how you get blessed when you go about things the right way, it's just amazing. One of the common questions that we've begun asking on this podcast has really taken off. And I think that it's taken off because it allows us to um, truly understand uh, what you're thinking and how you think. And I like asking the question on the spot, because if I were to ask you the question in advance, you would prepare and you would actually tell me three names that you probably had to uh, research and do and, and all these different things. But the question is this, 
if you were to be able to have lunch today with three people, dead or alive, who would those three people be and why would you choose them? Whoa, that's cold, man. Uh, that is cold, Jonathan, because <laughs> you, you want to think about this. Um, actually, well, my dad's here. Dad, I would have said you, but I'm going to say three more. Uh, <laughs> uh, wow. Um, man, conversation. Ooh. That's so cold. Because I, I, I'm never political because of being a realtor, you know, you have to be like, you can't be political, right? But, but man. I don't agree with that. Right. Okay. Well. I, 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 I believe that people should be able to believe in what they believe in. And if I other know. people don't like it, then too bad. Oh, no. Not, oh, not, no. not, not that you have to go out there and say anything. But. No, 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 right, right, right. Yeah. Because I, but, but anyway, but, but B.O. baby, Barack Obama, that would, that would be one. Um, that would be my man I'd want to just to speak with him. Um. Um, I don't want to speak with Jesus Christ yet, uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I do one day. So that's not number two. Okay. Um, uh, oh, man. Bill Gates. Mm, he was on my list of three. Bill Gates. Yeah. Why? Because he is still alive, we can try and arrange that. But, but right, um, as a wait, can I tell you a funny story of about course. Bill Gates? I met Bill Gates once, and my dad was there. Um, we were uh, in Northern California, and I I was a programmer at the time, and <laughs> and I and um, Bill Gates was there, and he had it open for questions, so I ran down. And I was the first one to ask a question. And, you know, I was a young programmer. And I asked him, Bill Gates, a question about the basic programming language. You know, because I was programming. Okay. And I asked my little question. I said, wow, I spoke to Bill Gates. And as my dad and I were walking back to the car, you know, we heard some two guys talking. I said, man, did you hear that? This one guy got a chance to ask Bill Gates a question, and he gonna ask about some damn programming. He didn't ask about stock tips or anything like that. And it just made me feel so stupid. <laughs> like Bill Gates didn't even know how to program anymore, you know. So I wouldn't talk to him about programming if I had a chance anymore. I, I'd mainly talk with him about I'd talk with him about um just how to do life. I just love the way nobody believed that he was gonna amass all of this money and one day give virtually all of it away um, for great causes. And um, they talked about, he's not giving away a dime, but he did it his way. He waited until he amassed how much he wanted to amass, and he waited for the time. And he is, he and his wife, Belinda, they uh, they have so many great organizations where they're giving back, and nothing, nothing will give me more joy and pleasure than to do something like that. Have you seen the new documentary on Netflix with... Bill and Melinda? No. It's a phenomenal documentary, and it was just released about a week and a half ago, and it talks about how they're trying to fight the world's sanitation issues, Mm -hmm. and that it's something that a lot of people have overlooked, and over the last four or so years, they've really found the experts when it comes to sanitation, and they've now been able to start putting in um, restroom facilities and plumbing facilities in a lot of places around the world. But if you think about it, you can't just go into these places and start putting things underneath them unless you were to rip them all out. So that's obviously not going to work. So they're really focused on sanitation is their number one thing that their foundation is focused on. And the documentary is a phenomenal documentary that that shows everything about it. And it really dives into the fact that it's not the most glamorous issue, right? Dealing with Uh, restrooms and dealing with sanitation. Um, But that was the thing that Bill decided that he wanted to focus on because he was reading a newspaper at his house. And one of the articles in there talked about, I don't remember the exact number, but X amount of children are dying every single year just because of sanitation, meaning they're getting disease. they're, They're getting all these different issues. And he said, 
that's the thing we're going to focus on. Ooh. And so it, it really tells a phenomenal story and shows um, really w- what he's thinking and how he's helping people. So I would definitely recommend that. Well, oh, definitely. Yeah. I love, I love not only the making of the money, cause there are a lot of wealthy people, but what to do, you know, of course, Warren Buffett, but that, that wouldn't be my third. <laughs> so your so, so your three were Barack Obama, uh, just, uh, Jesus Bill, Christ, but not yet. Yeah. Right. And, and Bill Gates. <laughs> and Bill right, Gates. Right. Awesome. You said earlier that uh, one of the things was you got into the business and when it, uh, real estate business is what we're talking about here, not with the intent of making phone calls and door knocking and doing some things that which you said were outdated, but you wanted to come into the social realm. You wanted to come into the more digital realm. And you said one of the people that you're looking up to is me, which is very humbling. What would be a question that you would ask me if you could ask me a question uh, when it comes to social or digital or things that I could say to do or not to do? Do you have any questions? Right. Uh, well, well, first of all, because I could do. Hey, hey, Dad, we got a radio show going on here, and you're louder than us. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, you see, he doesn't quiet down. That, that dude, boy, the nut doesn't fall far from the tree. But uh, <laughs> no, um, actually, uh, I have browsed around and 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 have seen what what you do, and. Um, and then I've joined the academy, and admittedly, um, I am a person with a you know I have. They used to just call me crazy when I was a kid, but I have like ADD or H- ADHD or whatever. But back then, they just called you crazy little boy, right? <laughs> so, um, what I would just ask you is, you know me well enough now. We we have a lot of kindred spiritness. Where should I get started. I feel that I'm special, just like I feel everybody else is special. You know, not that I'm more special than anybody else. I, you know what I want to do. You, you know exactly what I want to do. I want to take videos, and um, we have a production company. We, we, we have the time. We have the availability. We have the resources. We want to really... Um, make that matter where we're able to help a lot of people um, purchase homes. So I I would say to that is you need to understand the storytelling process and the reason why it's so important because Mm -hmm. a lot of people jump into ads, they jump into all of the cool features and benefits, but if they don't understand the way that story uh, can impact some, somebody, uh, then they don't really do any of this stuff well. And one of the things that I would tell to you is that a story is broken up into different sections, right? A good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Too many people only tell one part of the story, meaning they only tell the we have the we have the goods, click here type of story, the call to action story, right? Uh, too many people only give facts out, right? We just sold X house for X dollar. We just sold X amount of houses this year. So all of those things even if they look well, they're not good for social media because they don't tell a story. And what I was telling you earlier is tell people exactly what you want them to do, right? Tell them what you're thinking, right? Because when you do that, they also begin to think of things differently, right? So let's say not even in real estate related terms, let's say I'm at Disneyland and I'm with my family. Well, most people will, you know, get a nice picture and pose in front of the castle and and take a picture. And then they'll post it saying something along the lines of having a great day with my family. But what I would suggest that person do is not only you could take the great picture, you want to have great memories, but in your caption, rather than just saying, uh, we're here at Disneyland having a great time with my family, I would say we're, we're here at Disneyland having a great time with my family. When was the last time you had a great time with yours? Guess what that does now? It gets somebody to start thinking when they had a great time. They may not have had a great time. They may have had it five minutes ago. It may have been 10 years ago. But now you're getting somebody to think. And the reason that that's so important is because the moment you can get them to think, especially with your own content, is the moment that your marketing message gets into their subconscious. When you get into their subconscious, when you tell them to take action, the brain is actually wired for them to take action. 
So for an example, what I would do at an open house, which everybody thought this guy is crazy when I was a broker, I would come into an open house and I would get business cards and I would just start throwing them around the house, right? I'd walk up the stairs and I would drop them as I go up. I put some business cards on the toilet, put some business cards on the master bedroom pillow. Now, why would I do that? And you even did a little like, what the heck? This guy's a little weird. Why would I do that? Because I'm doing something different. And what I'm doing now is I'm allowing somebody to see my brand in different places. Why? Because it is out of place. There shouldn't be cards on the bathroom seat toilet. But guess what? The moment that they walk into the next open house, and I know that they're going to walk there because I would give them the directions to walk there, even if it's not my own listing. Why? I wanted them to go into the next property because the moment that they got there and they walked into the bathroom, who was it that they thought of? <laughs> they thought of me. Who was it that they... When they walked into the master bedroom and they looked at the pillow, who did they think of? They thought of me. And what I've now done is I've put my marketing message into the subconscious. So when I call them on Monday and I go to schedule an appointment, the brain is wired to take the next step. Why? Because I've now gotten my marketing message there. So when it comes to social and it comes to how do I get started, you need to understand that your goal is just to resonate with somebody in one of four pillars, okay? Personal. Disneyland as an example, community, it could be the park, it could be a restaurant, brand, who is it that your brand is when somebody is not there, what do they say about you, right? So for us, that was who you hire truly matters. Well, that's just a slogan. What does that mean? We showed you that when you hire us, it truly matters, right? And then the fourth component is your business, real estate. If you can get somebody to connect or think differently in any of those four capacities, when you want them to take action, they'll take action. Why? Because the brain is not wired to take action. But if you don't understand that, right? If you just come out, hold, oh, I can tag, I can tag a lot of people. That's a, that's a good benefit, right? If I tag a lot of people, but you have to really understand that this story, right? If I can get somebody to think about anything, just get them to think, get them to think about a shirt, get them to think about Disneyland, get them to think about Starbucks or th whatever it is. If they think because of you, they remember you. And if they remember you, the, the brain is wired to take action. So when I would go into a listing presentation, guess what I would do? I would never start pulling out all this information because guess what? Every piece of information that I would pull out, the brain is like, okay, barrier there, barrier there. They want your money. They want you to sign. They want to, you know, commit your life to them, this, 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 this. So if I were to ask them, okay, you ready to sign the listing agreement? Their brain is telling them, Heck no, we got a lot of questions. We got all these things. So what would I do? I, I played a four minute video that showed them everything that we're going to do, everything and exactly how it's going to work. Why? Because I want their brain to understand that you work with Jonathan, it's going to work out for you, right? But all of these different things and social allows you to do that. Social allows you to show people what you're doing. Good. If you, if you, let's say you did, you know, door knock, right? Well, if you just go and you take one picture and says, hey, I just, you know, door knock for two hours in the blistering sun, people don't understand that unless you, hey, we're out door knocking. Hey, we're at, we're at number 44, blah, blah, blah. Man, it's so hot out here. I, I hope you're, you know, not out here in this, this heat today. I hope you're in the cool. A matter of fact, where are you guys hanging out? Let me know below. I'd love to be where you're at. You know, everybody thinks entrepreneurship is so glitz and glamour, but actually it's not sometimes, you know, I'm out here door knocking. Uh, let me know what you guys are doing. Hopefully it's better than what I'm doing right now, but I got to do it in order to, you know, keep food on the table. Right. And now they're thinking like, man, entrepreneurship is not as easy as I thought, man, this guy works really hard and you're actually showing them. So the moment that you come out with a call to action or a newsletter that is getting them to give you information, the brain is saying, we trust this person. Right. So I answered a very long winded question, well, but, which is what I always do. Well, no, but <laughs> I love it. But let me say Two things. First off, when you told me about my video, we actually shot the video two more times. We, because, so everything you say, I love it and I'm learning from it. So just know that, that you have a great student here who wants to take in everything you say. And number two is a question for you. I purposely post, um, when I see some inspirational uh, message, like, a, you know, you are what you eat or whatever, um, and I feel that it's, uh, I posted one of yours that one day, right? Um, I post it, 
I choose, and before I say this, I know you're going to smack my hand and tell me what to do, so that's why I'm saying it. I choose not to, um, any tags on it, um, no words, and it's pretty much that's my giving to people with no, um, um, not wanting, not needing to receive anything back from it. What would you tell me about that? I would tell you to stop doing that instantly. Okay. And the reason that I'm going to tell you to stop doing that is <laughs> I knew you would. a couple of things. First off, if you post a picture or video that has more than 30% of text covering the image, the algorithms will not show it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's ba just based oh, on so, the, so you mean stop doing it all together. No, no, oh, no, no, oh, not, oh, not, oh, not oh. necessarily. The, the only way to get over that is if you can get people to engage with your stuff. However, most people don't engage with your stuff if you just post a picture with text because it doesn't really mean anything to them. I tell people, if you have to Google what to say, you're wrong. So if you're just posting something that's a comment that uh, is, is not by you, most people are not going to engage with it. If they don't engage with it, it it's not going to be seen by everybody. So what you said, though, and if we flip it back, what you said is that this is the reason why I do this, right? But I didn't know that. I just thought he likes posting quotes, right? And I'm not even reading the quotes fully because I, you're just posting images where I think, man, he's not he's not doing it correctly, right? <laughs> but so that's what, what I'm coming so to. So what you, you wanna, need to uh, do is you need to... So when somebody reads a quote, they think about whatever they think about. That doesn't necessarily mean that the person next to you thinks the exact same way as you. So if you look at any of the quotes that I do, I always ask people, what are your thoughts on this? What do you believe? Do you think this is right? Do you think this is wrong? You know, uh, here's what I thought about this, right? Or, hey, I woke up this morning and, you know, I was getting my day started and I read this and it made me think about this one time when my family was doing X, Y, Z and the light just turned off and <laughs> we don't have Hanson in here to help us with the light. Um, but, but what it does is nobody, nobody understands what you're thinking unless you tell them what you're thinking, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to post a quote, uh, and you're going to post an image with a quote or a video with a quote, whatever it might be, allow that person to understand what you're thinking. Because mm -hmm. when you tell them what you're thinking about, mm -hmm. they start thinking about what they're going to think about, right? Right. So I, I would I would ask questions. I would tell people what it is that you're thinking. I would okay. um, try to get engagement out of it. And again, it doesn't have to be right. doesn't have to be wrong. It, but if you're going to tell your thoughts, uh, it's going to allow somebody to think as well. And okay. that's what you want to do. So never, 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 never just post something and not tell people what it is that you're thinking, what it is that you want them to do, because they won't. Jonathan, so you're in trouble now. Because you should have told me that, man. Why are you going to get me on the, the podcast and finally to You knew you should have told me that a long time ago. No, I was actually just, I was just actually <laughs> looking at the things when we were uh, on the couch oh, going, you, on, going you mean, through your page. You mean page. to tell me you don't go through my page every day and say, what is Chip doing? Unfortunately, yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> no, no, um, no. No, I, but that's what I would do. And, and what I would do also is the fact that you already have some of those posts. Mm. Save those posts into your archive or just track them and then change it up and then then track and measure and say okay jonathan told me to do this this is working a lot better or this is not working at all and then you have a a, a, a foundation of what should say so, jonathan so works let, or not oh, let, oh yeah so let me ask you this should i um could i repurpose them or not like quotes from like a year ago that people have forgotten redo them again or no of course Okay. And uh, the only thing that I would say is just to make sure that your caption is a little bit different. If there was a caption, oh, no, if there was I nothing. I wasn't putting any captions uh, purposely, but so, now. I so the, the, the way that the algorithms are based is two to three years ago, they were based off of the more you post, the more people are going to see you. They're not based off of that anymore. They're all based off of two things, value and experience. Value comes back into, is this something that is going to help me? And the second is experience. And that really goes into the time that somebody is there on a post. It goes into the engagement on the post. It goes into whether or not uh, you lead them to a different website and that website has broken links or whatever, but it's about the experience. If you just post a quote with an image and they just see the picture and move on, that's a bad experience. Mm. So that's not getting them to read. That's not getting them to think. That's not getting them to do anything. So I would always... 
you know, propose this to somebody is rather than going out there, you know, posting two to three or four images or videos a day, just post one where you can get people to engage. Post one where you can get people to think about. If you can't post one a day, who cares? Like you don't have to post every day. Like if you can't respond to comments, like a lot of people do that too. Like let's use Disneyland as the example. You should never post a picture of Disneyland as a picture that you're going to put onto your actual feed right then and there. Why? Because your phone's going into your pocket. So if somebody were to go and comment, oh, hope you're having a great day, blah, 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 and you're not responding to them, the algorithm is say, this is a bad experience. This person doesn't talk to people. So use your, use your camera and take some great pictures, but enjoy your family time, right? And when you have some downtime, then do the post because if somebody were to engage with you, you can engage back. But also, the algorithm looks at time of response course. time. Okay. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know, if you're going into a listing presentation, don't post, "Hey, we're going into a listing." Pre-. You could do it on your stories because mm-hmm. stories are, you know, 24 hours. But if you're going to put something on your actual feed, then make sure that you have the time to respond to people. If I were to go back to your feed right now and say, and, and I would respond to everybody, no matter what, whether you agree or you don't agree, you need to respond because that engagement with people gets them to see your future post. Mm. So make sure you're responding to people as well. And that was a lot of questions. You know, man, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's let's wrap this thing up. And let's say that nobody has listened or anybody listening now has not listened to the previous 40 or so minutes. And uh, they see Chip McAllister. They don't know who you are. They don't know what you do. But they're coming on here for a piece of advice because – their business is not working. They're jumping all over the place from this, try this, do this, do that, not working good. They're all over the place. What would be a piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's all over the place that didn't listen to any of this previous podcast that, you know, maybe there's something that uh, you would like to say to them if you had the platform to do so? Well, Jonathan, I would say um, that everyone should be true to their nature be true to themselves, handle themselves in a way that will allow them to sleep well at night and do whatever it means to them, do the right thing um, and be excellent. And so because I can't be specific because I don't know exactly who we're speaking with right now, but just for a person to do do the right thing and be excellent, um, offer you, I mean, I offer my best when I'm dealing with clients, offer my best when I'm um, conversing with, with friends, um, be in the moment, be in the present. The, you know, the, the past is history. The future is not promised to us. But and I just saw this today. Yeah, but the present, it's a present to us. So enjoy it. And with us, um, our real estate business is just going, it's going up, 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 nowhere near as rapidly as I want it to, but it's working out perfectly the way it's supposed to, and I'm satisfied with that at this point. I know it's only a snapshot, but I'm happy. Um, I, I know that, that I'm helping a lot of people. So uh, you, you say that you're, you have long-winded um, answers. Mine is long-winded, but it just sums up to um, be the best be the best you, be the best version of you you can possibly be at all times, and that will enable you to sleep well at night. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below, and remember, who you hire truly matters.